Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Very early in the day, so there's not a lot of light out here. Um, but this is more of an information video than filming orchids. And orchid related though. I've just got so much to do today, I don't think I'm going to be able to do a proper video anyway. I'll not spend dedicated time. Um, but I just wanted to say a big thank you for all those who put ideas forward as to what to do with... Um, my recently departed friend's orchid collection, especially the um, um, award of the National Dendrobium Collection. Um, those ideas have all been put together in a document and sent off. Um, they'll become part of the discussion at the Zoom meeting this evening via the committee. Um, we've got our committee from Bournemouth Orchid Society, because Jeff was, um, that was his main society, but he was also a member of Wessex and um, contributed an awful lot to the shows um, regarding putting plants in and things like that. And um, so we've got representative from Wessex as well, uh, which is Lynn, in fact, who you know. Um, so hopefully we can sort something out tonight. The thing I haven't got, the information I haven't got, is the time pressure involved which is obviously exasperated by this flipping COVID nonsense. You know, I mean, like, we can't, we can't send a dozen people round to his greenhouse to get the plants out. Because <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be allowed to be in the greenhouse at the same time, sort of thing. So the, the complications of that are really going to come to the fore. Anyway, thanks for all your help with that. Um, all the suggestions have been passed on. I'm sure some of those suggestions were also suggested by other people, um, but nonetheless, I've collected them all together, went through all your comments and um, did a document and sent it off. So uh, we'll discuss that this evening. I'll let, I'll let you know how it progresses and uh, what, what happens, but um, yes, yeah, uh, sad times. Uh, like I've said before, when you get somebody who's been growing like that with such extensive knowledge, the knowledge isn't recorded. It's not there, is it? It's lost. It's gone. Um, when I said in one of, the com uh, one of the replies to the comments, this is where things like YouTube, possibly Facebook, come into their own, but specifically YouTube because it's video recording. If you think lots of people will know Rick L's channel, well, that channel stays as long as there's a bit of activity on it now and again. All that knowledge, all those videos, all that information remains for people to see and take advantage of, hopefully for all time. But there are so many people with levels of knowledge, you know, that are just lost when they die because it's not recorded. Now, I'm hoping to get in the greenhouse with the cameras. <coughs> Um, for practical reasons, because it turns out there's no inventory at the moment, so we don't know what's there. Um, well, video evidence, you know, taking photos of some of the specimen plants and things like that, may be allowed to be arranged. I can't say that definitely, but I've made the offer. I'm quite happy to go and do it, even if it's over several days. Um, but that remains to be seen. Um, so we shall see. Um, but as I said, I've got loads to do today and it's all not, well, a lot of it is not here. I've actually got to go out and about, which I avoid doing at all costs at the moment for obvious flipping reasons. But some things just, you have to go out. I've got a check I need to pay in. So I've got to go. I'm not going to the bank because that's downtown. I shall go in the little local post office. Um, I've got to get my Christmas meat. That means going to the butcher's separate place, you know, a separate trip. That meat has then got to be taken round my mum's to go in the freezer because I haven't got room for it in my little freezer. So I've got quite a bit to do on the outside today. I've also run out of milk. I've been having black coffee for two days because I've been saving up all my trips in one go. So when I go out today, I will get everything I know of that needs doing done in one day. And it needs to be done this morning on the grounds of Butcher only opens in the morning nowadays because he, you know, he hasn't got the custom he used to have. So anyway, that's that. A um, couple of things I noticed. I'm supposed to be watering today. That's probably not going to get done because it would end up being so late in the day. I don't like watering late in the day. My glomeratum, which not long ago I filmed saying it's on borrowed time and it's about to be thrown out. Um, I'm not going to have enough light. But basically, at the base of that plant, there's three new growths. So obviously telling it off worked. <laughs> now, whether those growths actually survive and, and progress, I don't know. But, 
you know, I, w- I was expecting perhaps one because there's something not quite right with this plant. It's just weak. Um, but if the three growths can all grow and mature canes and therefore produce root systems, that's on the mend. Yay! Because <laughs> the blooms on that are gorgeous. If I get time, I'll do a pop-up. But time's uh, something I haven't got too much of today. Um, there was something else that was nice. The um, Tahitian dancer has started to open a second spike now. Now it's raining, and all the stuff I've got to do, and it's raining. That's just what I need. Uh, um, there's still this spike to go, and that one right up the back actually belongs to this plant here. <laughs> it's just headed off into the uh, into the unknown. Uh, right, so there's those, and one of the um, strictly speaking, this isn't a twinkle. Um, it's actually a twinkle crossed back with Soto Annum, and it does have a specific name, but it's just opened all three spikes. Um, almost overnight, and that is uh, Siku Marguerite, Xi'an Si Glory. Well, you can read that if I haven't pronounced it right. Um, I think I actually got that at Ridlington School at one of their open days from one of the traders, not from Ridlington um, sales, but uh, I think that's where that came from. Anyway, so that, that's something that's newly opened. Um, it isn't open yet, but as you can see, it's not far off. That's the uh, Cattleya genmanii. Um, those are not the most attractive Cattleya blooms by any means, but they are big. <laughs> I can't reach up there at the moment because I've got the camera in one hand and um, there's something in my way on the floor. And all those spikes next to it, heading up towards the ceiling, that's the uh, Lelia Joyce Hilton. Um, but they're still quite a way off opening. Um, what else have we got that should be opening soon? Um, uh, my Lelia Anseps. This is spike number one. The buds are actually showing inside the sheaths now. And spike number two is behind. So that will be a staggered blooming. I doubt if those spikes will even be open at the same time. I think from memory, Lelia Anseps only lasts about three weeks, maybe a bit longer, but not long. Um, and these spikes are quite a bit apart, so they may open completely staggered. They might just about overlap. The um, Cinnamon Twinkle has opened up a bit better. <laughs> that was the one that uh, won the little competition, which one's going to open first. Uh, it only opened one bloom, and then it was ages before it opened any more, but nonetheless, it was the first to open. So there's that. Um, I suspect this one up here isn't going to be too long now. Um, that's the Twinkle Red Fantasy. In fact, we're nearly there. Uh, uh, that's got a, a petal or a sepal that's actually moved away from the bud. So a few days and we'll start getting some blooms on there. And although the tiny twinkle buds look tiny, <laughs> the blooms are basically white with a bit of yellow. Consequently, those buds don't develop any colour. So they just open. They're just like a surprise attack. In fact, this red fantasy has actually got another one opening around the back here. And another one there. Yeah, so that, that's going to be a good show in a, in a few days' time when they all burst open. And it shouldn't be too staggered because most of those buds look roughly the same size. There's two sets. There's this size set and then that size set, which will probably be about a week later. But I suspect that all those spikes are going to be open at the same time. That's going to be quite a show. Anyway, and the, we've got most of the buds are open on my Cattleya cernua now, but not all. There's still these few down the bottom that haven't opened yet. But most of the new growths have now split. And um, the first one to bloom, the one I took the photo of, um, that's going over now. Again, they don't last long. So we've still got a couple of buds to open, but not many. Um, and they seem to last about two and a half to three weeks. So although that's looking quite nice now, it won't be there long. And, um, and then it's gone for another year. And that's a funny one, Cattleya cernua. When that finishes blooming, all that's going to happen throughout the rest of the winter and into spring is that the new leaves will turn this colour. So they'll go from this light green to this dark green. And that's their maturing. And then it'll do nothing for months and months and months. <laughs> and then it'll come back into growth. The growths grow and mature quickly and bloom. And then it goes back. 
So this one has more rest than growth. It's a strange one. Uh, right, anyway, I must go get cracking. I've just got a lot to do today. I don't like it when I've got a lot to do such that it's, it's bordering on a bit of a hassle to try and get it all done um, in a reasonable time, if you know what I mean. And I don't want this dragging on and going on until, and into tomorrow and having to go out again, although that could happen. I could get to the butcher's and he hasn't got, got what I want, so I'll have to order it, then I'll have to go back and collect it, so I may still have to do two trips. But we shall see. And um, again, thanks for all your help with the suggestions. Um, I'm sure they'll be appreciated. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, and something else. <laughs> it dawned on me this morning, um, basically because a date-related issue came up in my reminders and it suddenly dawned on me it's the 10th today. Now that means two days ago it was the 8th, wasn't it? Oh dear. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but everything in bloom on the 8th is just going to get missed this time round. It's, um, <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do it now, fast. Right, we've got Mastavalia, Tahitian Dancer, Soto Annum, um, that twinkle thing I've just shown you, one Tolumnia with a branch opening, the Catlia Cernua, Bulbophyllum, Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury, Dendrobium Alexandrei, Oncidium thingy, <laughs> Chiroforum, that doesn't stick in my mind that one, um, Dendrobium Victoria Regina and the, I think it's an Oncidium Wildcat, I think it is, something like that. So, oh and the, oh no, that's going over. Yeah, so there we go. Everything in bloom in a minute <laughs> instead of on the eighth. Sorry about that. I just oh and 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 the um, Phalaenopsis type angel, Phalaenopsis type dendrobium. I think that's it. I don't think I've missed any. Sorry about that. Though. I didn't do that properly this time. But we'll uh, we'll see what happens in uh, in January. That'll be. We'll see what happens next year. That sounds odd, doesn't it? Well, that's how it's going to be. You're gonna, we're going to be starting to talk like that now. Well, next year, what I will do is. Because it's getting to that time, isn't it? See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.